How can you tell that we officially back in football season? Well, let me let you know. When you see topics like who has more to prove in this NFL kickoff game, Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson? And then I saw the question was asked, is the Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl window closed? And I said, oh, yeah, we officially, we all the way back now. But this game against the Kansas City Chiefs in a couple of days, it's a very, very big one. So the Baltimore Ravens need to be well equipped. They need to be ready and they need to be extremely prepared in order to take on and take down Kansas City. But how do they do that? Well, they got some great news. They've been getting great news every single day when it comes to the health of this team. Because let me show you their injury report. And this injury report is not edited. I did not Photoshop it at all. This is exactly what it is. The only people that are on this Baltimore Ravens injury report are Adisa Isaac, and Rasheen Ali. Now, you could think, oh, oh, yeah, of course. I mean, they haven't played a regular season game. Of course, that's how the injury report would be. Well, actually, no. Because if I take you back a couple of days, that injury report would look a lot different. But they didn't have to officially update it. Why? Because we were not in the regular season yet. Because if I go back a couple of days, you remember guys like Tyler Linderbaum, he would have been on the injury report. Mark Andrews, he would have been on the injury report. We remember, since he played so much in that first preseason game, he got hurt. Nate Wiggins, he had missed some time this offseason with the shoulder injury, but now he's back. So the Baltimore Ravens, heading into Kansas City, they are very, very healthy and that's a beautiful thing we're so used to these injury reports looking like receipts and we done been through it as Ravens fans but heading into Kansas City is such a, an important game and I know initially when we talked about this game I thought of it like uh it's it's just week one it ain't nothing crazy. We shouldn't trip it. But no, in my opinion, this is a big game. This is and can be a statement game. And while it is still just week one, this game can do so much for your football team's mentality moving forward. But it's a great thing that the Baltimore Ravens are healthy heading into this week one game against Patrick Mahomes and then Kansas City Chiefs. Now, while they are healthy and health is wealth, so Ravens got a lot of money right now. Health is not enough because the health of the team, that's the Jimmys and Joes. But we need to focus on the X's and the O's and coaching. Because in my opinion, that has been one of the biggest differences in the Ravens and Chiefs. Not the rivalry, because again, it is not a rivalry whatsoever. This thing has been extremely one-sided, extremely lopsided. Chiefs got it. They got us. They got the Baltimore Ravens number. I know we hate to hear that, but we can't tell you nothing but the truth on here. So in order for the Ravens to tilt this thing in their favor, especially this game this Thursday night, everything, in my opinion, it starts with coaching. Now, coaching is not the end-all, be-all, but the coaches have to put the players in the right position to make plays and to get the best out of them. It's super, super important. And if you can conquer the Andy Reid monkey that's been on your back for years, this season could be so special, extremely special. It reminds me of the Baltimore Ravens under Joe Flacco. Early on under Joe Flacco, the Baltimore Ravens, they will be this team that will be winning a bunch of games, but for some reason they just could not beat the Steelers when they had Ben Roethlisberger starting. For some reason, they would just struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle whenever Ben Roethlisberger was in the lineup. And they would always find ways to lose. There would be close games. There would be some games that got a little ugly, but they would struggle against Ben Roethlisberger. They just could not beat him. And then finally, finally, in 2011, the year before the Super Bowl, they beat him. And and they they whooped them in that first game. I think they they won like thirty five seven in week one. And then the Torrey Smith game where he caught that game winning touchdown. Uh, that was later on that same season. So they swept the Steelers. They swept them. So it was like, oh, they finally got that monkey off their back. They had been dealing with it for years, but then they finally got past it. And then the following year, what happened? Well, you know the rest of the story. But for Lamar Jackson and Baltimore Ravens, the Chiefs. They have been that monkey on their back. 
that they got to get off, that they got to get past, that they got to be able to get through. Because if you're going to get to that ultimate goal, which obviously is the Super Bowl and not just get there, but win it. But if you're going to get there in the first place, you're going to have to defeat the Kansas City Chiefs one way or another. What better way than to start your season doing just that? Team, keep it clean before we continue. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton and turn on your notifications. Also, be sure to check us out on Spotify. The link is down below in the description. Now we are here at my favorite part of these videos where we get to answer questions by y'all. It's fun featuring your questions in these videos. If you would like to ever be a part of this, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron. You got the VIP access, baby. You ain't got to send no email or nothing. You just send a message directly on Patreon, and we'll take care of you. Now, our first question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Oscar. He said the following, Ain't Graven, realizing it's been a while. Yeah, man, it has been a little minute, but good to hear from you. Hope you all, everything is good with you. He said, uh, hope all is well with you and yours. Question, what do you feel like it will take for us to not only beat them this Thursday, but to also dethrone the two-time Super Bowl champs, Mahomes, and those Kansas City Chiefs? I think we had a good offseason and think we are possibly their biggest threat in the AFC, but I'm not sure if we can take that title from them. What do you think? Well, the Ravens certainly can, but um, it's a couple of things. Uh, number one, they, gotta, they can't let the Chiefs get in their head. They, they cannot let the Kansas City Chiefs get in their head. You're going to be at their stadium watching them get their Super Bowl rings, watching the banner drop, watching all the fireworks, the celebrations, so on and so forth. We know the Chiefs are really America's team. I like how Cam Newton brought up that. A really, really good point about them. How, yeah, everybody talk about Dallas Cowboys are America, but no, it really is the Kansas City Chiefs. And that makes a whole lot of sense. But anyway, be yourself. Be you. Don't try to be them. Don't try to be somebody. No, no, no. Be the Baltimore Ravens. Play your style of football and play your version of football because when you play your version of football, we've seen you win a whole lot of games, a lot of them. So be yourself. Stop trying to switch it up against the Chiefs. Stop trying to play prove it ball. Be you and just play straight up winning football, whether it's ugly Hey, or if you want to keep it pretty, that's fine. But just win. That's it. Simple as that. Just win. Offensive line is going to be huge in this game. I mean, they're going to be huge in every single game, but in this one specifically because this is the first time they're going to really all be playing together. Whatever that starting lineup ends up being officially, we'll see this Thursday. But they're going to be huge because obviously everything starts and ends with them. Derrick Henry, Baltimore Ravens' new free agent acquisition. He can't get nothing going if that offensive line ain't blocking. You don't want him to be keep keep on getting hit in the backfield. No, you don't want him to even get touched, period. But certainly not in the backfield. So the offensive line got to block. Lamar, he got to be on point because he has not had his best games against the Chiefs either. So he got to bring it. And again, play your style, man. Through the air, on the ground. Just do whatever it takes to just win. That's it. Receivers. Y'all got to take advantage. They got Trent McDuffie, who's nice, but who's their cornerback too? Take advantage of it. Like, really, Willie Gay, who was nice, their old linebacker, I think he's playing in New Orleans now. Tear up the middle of the field, man. Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, go off, man. But so Ravens just got to really try to exploit every single Kansas City Chiefs defense that they see. It's important that the coaching staff make the proper adjustments. It's just important that the Ravens show up because against the Chiefs, they have not been showing up like they should. They've come close, but close is not enough and close is not going to get it done. You also asked the question, how can the Baltimore Ravens dethrone the Kansas City Chiefs? It's the same thing. Don't make the moment too big for you it is and it's not too big for you y'all done played in plenty of big games y'all have had good enough teams to beat the Chiefs good enough teams to be Super Bowl champions but for different reasons y'all have fallen short but the main reason y'all keep falling short is because you don't play your style of football against them Kansas City Chiefs you don't play your style of football in the biggest playoff games so you keep on failing and looking around wondering hey what's going on here be yourself that's it. Next question, or I guess really comment came from my guy TJ. Now, if y'all remember TJ, boy, TJ would go off on these Ravens. Boy, TJ don't play. He don't mess around about them Baltimore 
Ravens, and he will let you know exactly how he feels every single time, and he's straight up. But he said the following. He said, Lamar and the Ravens will three-peat, starting with this one. He's the Kobe Bryant of the NFL. This is our year. This is his year. Rest in peace to Joe D uh, and Jacoby Jones. He said, run it back on him. Jones, this is for y'all. God bless the family engraving, and God bless our Ravens. Amen. Mamba mentality. Oh, he said, Mamba mentality. Thursday, let's bust him in the mouth all the way to the AFC Championship game and do it again. Get this ring. I love it. Real quick, I'm glad you brought that up. The Baltimore Ravens this year, they're going to be, we know you know they're going to be honoring Joe D and Jacoby Jones for sure, but they have a helmet decal that's going to be honoring uh, both of those. So, Ravens, finish the job, man, straight up. Like my guy TJ, TJ mentioned, like, just bust him in the mouth, like, straight up. Don't be, be scared. Don't play scared. Don't be fr No. Go into Kansas City. Because, hey, nine times out of ten, last year was that one out of ten time. But nine times out of ten, you're going to have to go there again. You're going to have to go there again. Last year, you had an opportunity where they came to your crib. Oh, it was nice. Oh, yeah, come on, Kansas City. Come on, m t Bank Stadium. We got something for you. No, Ravens ain't have nothing for them. They ain't have nothing for them. I don't know what that was about. But anyway, you so you get used to it because you, you might end up here again. But either way, like I said earlier, like we all know, if the Baltimore Ravens are going to win a Super Bowl this year, you're going to have to see the Kansas City Chiefs again. And the thing about it, too, take advantage of them now, too. And again, Baltimore Ravens are in the same position that the Kansas City Chiefs are with what, what, what I'm getting ready to say. This is the very early in the season. This is the very beginning of the season. So teams are not clicking on all cylinders yet. Take advantage, man. Take advantage. Chiefs got a lot of new pieces, a lot of new receivers, and they brought back an old receiver in Juju too. With the Baltimore Ravens, y'all are the second year in this system. Now, the Chiefs, they've been in that system for a minute, with Andy Reid and whatnot. But with the Baltimore Ravens, you, you've been in this system, but now you got a lot of the same weapons too. It ain't too many new weapons. Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. The newest weapon is Derrick Henry. So, and, but I'm sure Lamar Lamar's going to do just fine with the handoffs to Derrick Henry. I'm sure they're they going to have that on point. But take advantage the, to the fact that you know your weapons very, very good. You have a good relationship with your weapons. You have good rapport with your weapons. With Rashad Bateman, we'll see how it goes in the regular season because, again, we, we, we heard some stuff in the offseason, like during training camp and stuff. We will see reports on it here and there. But now, ho hopefully, reporters and stuff were just holding back with what they wrote about Rashad Bateman and Lamar Jackson. Hopefully, they were just trying to keep it a secret so Rashad Bateman can take these Chiefs by surprise week one from jump. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, I just watched a video about Trent Williams and 49ers letting Debo go. He said, if now... Not letting Debo go. I, what I said was that I know Trent Simpson, I mean, Trent Williams ain't going nowhere. I know he wasn't going to go nowhere. They were definitely going to get it done with him, get something done with him to where he stays uh, with the San Francisco 49ers. And, like, as of maybe, like, a couple hours ago, they did. So he is remaining with the 49ers. He ain't going nowhere. Uh, but I did say with them re-signing Brandon Ayuk, that I think they're going to end up moving on from Debo. The, at the latest, next offseason, could it be during this season? Maybe, maybe but probably not, but I, I think next offseason, I think they'll move on from Debo for sure. Just had to clear that up before we continue. Now, he said, uh, if they let Debo go, you know where I'm going. Could we make a move for him and keep some key players when it's time to re-sign players? Oh, it sounds like you're talking about like this year. Like getting Debo this year. I feel like Debo would be such a great fit with the Baltimore Ravens. Reason being because he is a wide receiver, obviously, but he's a wide receiver. He's a running back. He's a, he, just, he just does so much for them. And he is such an unconventional player because, yeah, you can label him a wide receiver. He catches passes technically, but you could put him in so many different places on the offense. And with the Baltimore Ravens, if they were, add, were to add him, It'd just be a, a, a nightmare, man. In a good way for us, a bad way for defenses. Anyway, he said, with the king at running back, Zay Flowers, Bateman, and D-Boy wide receiver, hopefully Mark Andrews and Isaiah tight end, can you picture a formation with Lamar, King Henry, and Debo in the backfield? Time to win it all this year, and your baby girl excited as well. That's why she threw up and pooped. Oh. <laughs> Appreciate you, Jarbo. And again, hopefully Ravens, they could cash in and make it happen. 
is enough enough next question came from my guy mark jg he said what's up engraving what's up mark he said hope everything everyone is doing well with you and your fam i appreciate you they are he said got some points and questions for you and team keep it clean with lamar we know he's going to get a lombardi eventually true uh, but will that silence any critics some but definitely not all because when not if but when lamar jackson the baltimore ravens win that first super bowl that should be this year i mean it's right on time every 12 years but when they win that first super bowl some people who won't want to admit that they wrong won't want to admit oh man he finally won't. they're gonna say no, he needs to win another one he, he needs to get a second well he oh he ain't got a third one they got that's what they're gonna say because you know that as soon as he wins one they're gonna try to discredit him because so many people try to discredit so much of what lamar jackson does no matter what but anyway continuing he said um will will that silence any critics he says i say no because mahomes is that measuring stick with one two three rings i believe he can but for sake of greatness and debate i feel lamar would need two or more rings to enter that conversation one isn't enough now if he excuse me my fault when he gets that first super bowl ring and patrick mahomes still has three yeah patrick mahomes as far as career greatness he would still be over lamar jackson because he would have three lamar would have one both of them would be former mvps of the league both of them would be super bowl champions but patrick mahomes will have had that super bowl championship three times so if we're just talking about just lamar's greatness as a quarterback just him and yeah, that that's him. He he would be great, amazing. I mean, he's already got on on track for, to go to the Hall of Fame. But if we're talking about Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes, when Lamar wins one, then yeah, Patrick Mahomes he would have him because yeah, he would have those three. But anyway, continuing, he said, "This is Brady versus Manning of this era. This is just the inner analytic fan talking. I love my QB, and to be referred to as the number two QB, and in some ways, number one QB in the league is awesome. To say knowing the Ravens' track record at QB, excluding Joe, maybe I just love the hate Lamar gets just for him to prove people wrong. My God, Mark, he got a little petty in him, don't he? I, I think he does. But no, I, I get you, man. That is something nice to think about, man." um that's often something that i don't normally think about but it's something that we appreciate and him just saying that um to be known in the nfl there's 32 teams and for our favorite team the baltimore ravens for our quarterback to be considered the second best qb in the entire nfl and some people will say one but for him to be considered the second best qb in the entire league 32 teams and for him to be number two, that's that's pretty good. And in my opinion, this wasn't from my guy Mark, but in my opinion, Baltimore Ravens haven't even done everything to get the most out of him. I, I see people often say, oh, Ravens, they don't need a star wide receiver because of the way that their offense is run. I see a lot of analysts say that. I see a lot of commentators say that. We see, I see a lot of Ravens fans say that too. And I get it because Ravens fans, they could be conditioned to think a certain way and whatnot. But just imagine if Lamar had that. Just think about everything that he's done and, every, and everybody who he's done it with. Think about, like, seriously think about that. Everything that he's accomplished and who he's accomplished it with. Now imagine if he had even better weapons at the wide receiver position because that's been the one position where it's been uh, that's been the one because they're running back i mean derrick henry will be the best running back that he ever had mark ingram he was nice they run it but they're running back they, they they've been all right but they they got the job done but even the receivers that he's had a lot of them have been all right but they've gotten the job done but just imagine if he had solid went from solid or some good to great and phenomenal wide receiver. Oh, my goodness. It would just be crazy. Anyway, continuing. He also said, you ever notice that offensive linemen don't really uh, get traded at the deadline during the season? I'd assume the reason would be because it would take time to jail with the line to be able to work together and understand as a unit. But you could probably say that with any position. I'm so glad you said that. because I was I, While I was reading, I was thinking that same thing. He said, so my question with the deadline being far out, LOL, what position would you see us possibly 
being upgraded? And if so, who? I'd go a wide receiver or edge with a wild card being offensive line. Uh, the list has no particular order with some eight ages. All right, so he gave us a list. At edge, he said Hassan Reddick or Khalil Mack, Isaiah Simmons, or J Jermaine Johnson. Ain't, I feel like he just got to the, the Jets like a couple of years ago because he's from, I want to say Florida State. Uh, I ain't going to even try to think of it off the top of my head. Anyway, um, and he said as far as receivers, DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup. Whoa, that that's a sneaky one right there. Uh, DK Metcalf. Oh, that's. That would be the one for me. That that would be the one for me. And we talked about it this offseason. Like, if the Baltimore Ravens got a DK Metcalf, if they brought him to the team, um, already obviously got a good relationship with the head coach because he's a former Baltimore Ravens um, intern and a former Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. Um, and I think, wasn't he a linebacker's coach too? I think, anyway. Um, so if he were to bring on a DK Metcalf, like he – he would be such a great fit for the Baltimore Ravens. Physical wide receiver, speed. He'll go up and get it. When the play breaks down, he be good for it. Like, yeah, see, yeah, I know y'all can hear my daughter crying right now. She's crying because she's thinking like, man, these Ravens, they really need to get the best, best out of Lamar Jackson. Are they going to ever do it? Because, again, now they've gotten great. Out of Lamar Jackson They've gotten a, They've gotten multiple MVPs Out of Lamar Jackson So I know You may hear me say Oh the Ravens haven't gotten The best out of Lamar Jackson But he's been the best player In the league Not once but twice How is that possible? Well it is They can get even better They, re they really like Oh like I don't think y'all Some of y'all get it man I know a lot of y'all do But I don't think some of y'all Really get where I'm coming from man Like Lamar is great He's amazing but he could be even amazing, girl. Even though that ain't even a word. If, oh, yeah. But anyway, let me get back to his list. Some other people on his list said Cortland Sutton. I can see them doing that one too. John Mechie the third from the Texans. Parker Washington. Uh, oh, I'm not really familiar with him. I know he. I think he get a big return in the preseason. Anyway, and, and Rashid Shahid from the Saints. Um. Oh, but his question was. Uh, with the deadline being far, what position would you see the being possibly upgraded in? If so, who? Yeah, I, I could see it being wide receiver, and not even necessarily because their group of wide receivers was like playing bad or anything like that, but to just get built, get even stronger, to really try to amp up this team and really make them go on a run come postseason. So again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Last season during the year. They were trying to – Keaton Mitchell was still healthy now. He was still healthy. But they were trying to get Derrick Henry. I wonder, because you, you hate having to think about stuff like this, but the way that everything went down, you got to think about stuff like this. I wonder how, what, how the Baltimore Ravens would have acted if they would have had Derrick Henry in the backfield in the playoffs. I, I, I really wonder, because your backfield would have been Derrick Henry, Keaton Mitchell, I wonder if that if that in, that injury might have never, never even happened. Possibly, if the Baltimore Ravens had a Derrick Henry, because he would have been getting a lot more carries and whatnot. Keaton wouldn't have been getting as many, but we'll never know. But um, I wonder how they would have acted if they would have got him last year. Hmm, that's just something to think about. Anyway, um, he also said real quick, I feel Bo Bray will replace Eddie Jackson next year. I, I don't think that's a hot take at all. I really don't. He obviously showed them a lot. They were extremely impressed with him to where he made the roster after they signed free two free agents, uh, veterans at the safety position, after they drafted a uh, uh, safety at the same position he plays, and he still made the roster. That says so much to me about Bo Braid, man. It, it really does, man. But anyway, he said, uh, I feel Bo Braid, Bo Braid will replace Eddie Jackson next year. Sorry for the long one, Engraven. I wanted to try to get one in before the season kickoff. You ain't got to apologize for nothing, man. You're good. I, I appreciate you even sending it. He said, also, I want to let you know you're one of the few people I feel does this uh, and off camera. You can call your team, keep it clean, family and friends, and you genuinely mean what you say. Of course, no shots at anyone. It's real what you bro. Much love to you and yours and team, keep it clean. You guys stay blessed. No, man, I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I always tell people, and we, we, tell, we tell the Baltimore Ravens too, but playoffs, they don't be like listening, but always tell people, be you, man. Be you. Be you. With whatever you're doing, be you. Especially with something like this. Because if you get on here 
and you try to be somebody else or you try to be something that you're not, that makes everything that much harder. So that's why when we come on here, yo, yo you, you're going to get the dad jokes for sure. Because I, I, don't, I, I tell them all the time to my wife, to, to, to my son, my daughter, she's going to be getting those dad jokes too. But um, it's just being able to make fun of yourself too. Being able to make fun of yourself. On here, we got plenty, we had plenty of conversations about life, whatever it may be. Uh, we tried to use uh, analogies um, to help whatever the point is we're trying to drive to, to just help it hit home that much more, to just try to relate, make things relate and make stuff more understandable for everybody. And again, like I said, we just, the main thing is just to try to have fun on here. And that's what we do in real life. That's what we do on here. And that's it, man. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody. Thank you all for being a part of this. And you see, you see, she, she's crying right now because she's thinking about the Ravens not being themselves. She's still thinking about it. She's still thinking about how they need to get better out of Lamar. How they need to get, they need to get more out of Lamar by doing more for him. So you can really get the best out of him. And she's thinking about how they need to be themselves in the playoffs. My daughter knows. I know all y'all do too.